I think we have time for one more revolution before lunch. <laughs> Buckle up. I am a registered nurse, a creator, curator, and caretaker of your health data. And I'm also a mother of a patient who has grown up with a chronic condition that has no cure, but plenty of data. So you can pick a perspective, but either or, we need to talk about how all of us access our health information. 2019 is shaping up to be a year of some pretty major global firsts. And on that list, a prediction that this is the year in which a majority of the global population will become digitally connected. When 4 billion internet users push us past the magic midline and 50.8% of the global population is online. A true world of digital consumers. Healthcare will be forever altered by this digital transformation, partially because it contributes to what is already an increasing trend towards consumerism in health. In these digital days, don't we have an opportunity almost daily to download some latest and greatest ability to monitor or track or measure or compare our personal health data to track or at least drive our own health behaviors. There's wearables and home monitoring and mobile applications and most of us carry devices around in our pockets that help integrate and relay this data to us whether we like it or not in notified real time. It's a digital health evolution and it's really created some new expectations when it comes to demands related to patient-centered care, engagement, and empowerment. In technology, patients are viewed not just as consumers, but users. And because of that, there is a really intense focus on your experience and your satisfaction as a customer. Now think about trying to shift this ideal into healthcare, where I think that really making a change in those historic institutionalized roles that we have occupied both as practitioners and patients for more than a millennium is going to take more than a download. Let's do a digital comparison, Canadian edition. This is my bank card. Don't try to get the numbers. It's fine. <laughs> it gives me access to everything I need to know about my finances, the balance, the interest rates, when things are due, when payments are coming up, right? 24-7, 365 days a year. I can access it all online, every account and dollar. Now, what about this card? It's true. A Canadian health card is a valued possession. It provides me with a lot of essential services. But from a digital perspective, in comparison to this card, in this historic year of digital connectivity, I think maybe it's time for this one just to do a little bit more. I have no electronic access to my health data. No way to see my lab results or maybe some information on that x-ray I had last week. I can't see my re immunization record or my kids. If I've been in hospital, I can't see those helpful notes that came along with my discharge. Imagine if your only access to your bank balance was to remember what your banker told you it was on your last visit, and then you've just kind of done the math since then. <laughs> or alternatively, you could go to the bank, 
during regularly scheduled hours, please. And you could go up to the bank till you could pay them some money and they would give you a copy of your own bank balance. Is this a bank that would be in business for very long? No, because we know as financial consumers, we need a lot more reliable access to our critical banking information than that. But as patients, we accept the status quo when it comes to accessing our critical health information. At least we did. Today, many Canadians are engaged in a digital patient control revolution. They're connected by posts and armed with hashtags and united as never before with a belief, I think, that technology may finally deliver on the long-standing promises made in patient-centered care. Or, as these revolutionaries would prefer, patient-partnered care. Canada Health Infoway is the national agency that is charged with establishing our Canada-wide electronic health record. And recently they launched a new initiative. It's called Access 2022. It is a bold promise about a digital health future that includes better access to data and in fact to a whole host of virtual care that is going to deliver improved service and access to us all no matter what part of the nation that you call home. The goal of Access 2022 is that by that time, five million Canadians will have access to their electronic health data. Hmm. That's 14% of the population, in case you were just doing the math real quick. And maybe you're thinking to yourself, is that for all? Well, it's a long way from the 7 to 8% of Canadians who currently have this access. So it's a journey. And there's two important things I want us to know as we buckle up and embark on this journey. First, that digital health is fast-paced, commoditized, disruptive entity. In short, it's big business. In fact, it's worth billions of dollars already in Canada alone. And I think all Canadian patients should be aware of that because access will come at a cost. However, it can also deliver huge savings into our healthcare system, also approaching the billions, and well before we reach the magical access for all. And second, about that access, the one that's costing and is a journey and that we're a long way from, it's only the first step, a critical step, absolutely. But there's a few things we need to attend to after that. I call it our digital 3D challenge. Number one, digital infrastructure. Canada is a large and glorious country. It is the second largest in terms of area. And trying to cover all of that geography with digital connectivity takes some work. But let's all recognize that access is not actually the same thing as reliable and usable access as anyone who can still hear those dial-up tones ringing in their head will know. Number two, digital literacy. Typically we think about patients at this part. Patients will have to have new digital skills. I agree, many patients will. Not all of you are live tweeting right now. You're probably good on the digital literacy part. But also the health literacy, seeing all that new data. But it's not just the patients, unfortunately. All health practitioners need much more digital curriculum in their education programs and not just in school, 
but in ongoing professional development opportunities that come after. If we're really going to be able to up our game and support patients across a full continuum of digital know-how, we have some learning to do ourselves. And nurses, not to pick on you, on us, but we are the largest global healthcare workforce. We are partners in teaching, in discharge, in communities, and we have to be leaders in helping patients come into this digital era. Last but oh so not least is the digital determinants of health. Already, digital health has created divide and exclusion where it should have been an opportunity for improved access and equality. Having struggled to sex successfully address the social determinants of health, we now are going to be faced with the much more complex and in some cases amplifying challenges of trying to render equity through the digital determinants of health. But every patient has the right to this revolution. And so this 3D dilemma is not something we can ignore. That's why I like it, right there in front of me, where I can keep an eye on it, where we can all work towards resolving these issues. Because even with the challenges, I'm here to tell you right now today that the digital health transformation can't be stopped, and I'm not sure the revolution can at this point either. And knowing that, I think it really makes sense to prioritize patient access to your own healthcare data as an essential step in moving us all forward. But why revolution? In short, that's a big question. But in short, I'm going to tell you that despite decades of patient-centered pursuits, many patients feel as sidelined as ever. And because ultimately, revolutions are about changes in power. And in this case, as the old adage goes, knowledge is power. Patients want as close to real-time access to as much of their health data as they can get. And would you really want any partner of yours in any venture to have anything less? In our research with patients in Saskatchewan who were given access to their electronic health record, yes, it was possible, they told us that they wanted to see what their practitioners were seeing and be heard in all of the care discussions and determinations that followed, to be informed partners. I think all of us want and are beginning to expect the same kind of customer service in our healthcare experiences that we get in other areas of our lives where, let's face it, many things are just available download on demand. If healthcare doesn't deliver, the digital players that provide all of those other services are more than willing to step in and take up the healthcare space. How many people are wearing an Apple Watch in this audience, monitoring all kinds of your vital signs? They're there. So best we all join the revolution, ready or not. And still some hesitate, saying, is revolution really a best way to deliver a new and improved partnership? I think that the revolutionary attitude is driven by the realization that the outcome of this still largely rests with healthcare practitioners. And how prepared we are to join with patients who sit somewhere between a healthcare past and future. If we really want to build a bridge between these two existences, I think we need to understand that it is going to be likely much less about digitalization and much more about actually reforming the relationships through which healthcare is delivered. Because patients who see what practitioners see will be a new breed of patient. They'll have new needs related to education and connectivity, and they may need time to get comfortable with this new digital reality. 
it is just going to take some old-fashioned, courageous collaboration on the part of all parties to move into this era. And healthcare practitioners, I think it is on us to remember that at least for now, the current system favors us. And that we have some power, first of all, to dictate what information is released, and also to dictate the pace at which this digital evolution moves forward. But practitioner beware. This is a digital world, a consumerized world. And patients, you have ever-increasing opportunities to work around any barriers that we might present, especially if we try to delay real-time access or access to the electronic health record altogether. The message from the current revolutionaries is clear. The status quo must go. And for goodness sakes, could you take the fax machine with you? <laughs> it's a rally cry that is resonating with more patients every day. And I hope it is resonating with you right now. And you're sitting there asking yourself, where is my electronic health data? When will I be able to see this great information? And I want you to take the very next opportunity that presents to ask your doctor, your nurse, your pharmacist, your elected representatives, when this card is going to deliver the same data access that this one does. Because honestly, it is time. It's beyond time. And a recent national survey of Canadians spoke truth to that, indicating that many of us, the majority of us, are ready. There is going to have to be change in those traditional roles, those relationships. And it's going to take partnership, not just between practitioners and patients, but between technology and administrative stakeholders as well. Is a digital health future truly accessible for all Canadians? If you take away nothing else, I want you to believe and join with me in understanding that we have to harness the power of technology to make that happen. Do all Canadians want this digital health future? Maybe not, but choice is key. Remember, even though I can see my bank balance online any moment, any day, some days offline is better. <laughs> but when it comes to our healthcare data, we are far, far past the moment where we decide if all Canadians should be able to access their electronic health information. It is time for all of us to work together to revolutionize the how. Thank you.